Hi, John Marshall, the Drill Master. I have a critique here of what looks like to be a regulation drill sequence. At the Carver Citywide Drill Competition from 2021. So that explains the, the silly masks. Alrighty. Um, and not that the people are silly, it's just that ridiculous notion. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm skipping the first minute here. Um, because I didn't understand exactly what was going on. Uh, these last three team members coming up here were, were marching in and it just didn't look like... I didn't know if the camera was going to zoom in on the color guard that was behind them in a, uh, as the, the camera was following, but now I realize what's going on. So, all right, um, I got a, a little bit of a, a trouser length issue here. Uh, going on in uh, second squad, the third rank. Um, but, you know, cadets grow. We're high school kids, and uh, we grow at that age, uh, sometimes really rapidly. So, uh, even the commander, uh, you know, you've got uh, a little bit of high waters going there. But, like I said, kids grow. So, sometimes you just can't help it, and sometimes it's overnight. All right. Uh, so the reason I didn't understand this is because each one of the squads marches in and you'll see what's going on here <clears throat> excuse me uh, the second squad uh, just aligned so we'll so None of what you see here makes sense. This doesn't make sense at all. This is not how, how I'm 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 gonna guess that well, I tell you what. I'm gonna go back here and see here's the uh here's the last three marching in. And there's the color guard behind them, so I, I didn't know exactly what uh so didn't execute that flank well. coming in that was a, a poor halt so also the the feet are coming out to the side <clears throat> when we halt we're supposed to be marking time like this okay and then when we halt it's going to be squad halt step close that's it not not coming out to the side I understand that sometimes we want to get that that nice sharp feel in there but that's not the time to do it uh, so I'm gonna guess that and this is the reason why I skipped is because it, it just didn't uh, it didn't make uh, sense here I'm gonna guess that the the commander gave the command to fall in and then each squad comes in one by one and that's not how we fall in <clears throat> uh, fall in is a a group uh, thing it's a whole platoon uh, uh, requirement for everybody to come in and also the training circular army j rossi so the training circular says that you double time into into formation so the team everybody all at once should have come in <clears throat> found their spot and and uh, fallen in this I, I, I get it it's a uh, it's a little more orderly I understand that you're you're maybe wanting to make a uh, uh, make a, uh, a nice statement for the judge to see but it it's not standard it's well it's not within standards I'll, I'll put it that way it's not within standards at all this is not how you fall in and so um, especially with the, the the facing movement and then giving dress right <clears throat> you can see almost everybody brings that foot out um, as it's as if you're uh, on the old guard and uh, a tomb sentinel And you, so 
if this were the technique, nobody should execute dress right from the second uh, squad uh, on if there were more squads uh, besides second and third. So it, this is not the technique. This is totally not how to fall in. But okay, let's say this is a requirement um, and the, the team has to enter this way. I actually had to do this similar situation at Arizona State University when I was on drill team and uh, it was done on purpose to make the, the team come in through a, a narrow doorway, enter with the, the, last, uh, the last squad coming in first and then the, the uh, second squad or uh, third and then second and then first. <clears throat> we had elements but um, so maybe this is a requirement of the meet to see how everything goes so alright if that's the case then what should have happened is first squad comes in and uh, aligns <clears throat> uh, first squad leader could have given the uh, uh, could have given the, the command to mark time a little bit sooner on on a the opposite foot a little sooner so that the team would stop with uh, uh, centered on the commander and also then centered on the judge but all right so they uh, she didn't not a problem <clears throat> but then everybody else who comes in you stop you left face and then the 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 squad leader would then give cover and that's it you just cover on the individual in front of you and then make sure that you're aligned to your right on that command. Um, but then again, cover doesn't work in line formation. The cover and recover, um, I guess you could say, you, you could give cover, but it wouldn't be the, well, you, but you have to use the arm movement as well. So this is an interesting situation. Uh, but dress right isn't necessary and uh, you can also see <clears throat> since I I stopped the uh, uh, the video here what you can see here in in uh, third squad second rank young lady there has her head down as so uh, there's a, a tendency of, of all kinds of different uh, techniques so when we when we execute eyes or eyes right or or uh, dress right, we're looking to the right, but the chin should stay at the same level. If you can see that, the chin needs to stay at the same level. So Air Force only goes to a 45 degree angle, and then our eyes have to be uh, all the way over. Uh, Air Force and Space Force, but everybody else, you turn your head as far as possible to look down the line. Uh, so what this young lady did with this cadet, she, as she turned, she dropped her head, but then uh, the, the male cadet at the end there, third squad, third rank, has his, uh, has his chin at the same level, but it looks like his head is tilted back like this. I mean, maybe not that drastic, but it looks like it might be. I, I'm just saying FYI, that, that's all, not a, <clears throat> not a problem. Uh, if it isn't so also see when we when we dress like this if you're I'm going to use the microphone uh, let's say that that I'm, I'm going to dress to the right and my fingertips are supposed to touch this is the 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 shoulder my fingertips are supposed to touch but he's also for Army and Air Force and Space Force when we dress to the right like this we're also looking to the front just with our eyes to make sure that we are covered down so that after after the, the the commander gives right front, we don't give cover. That's Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard. So the the arm must be well, and you can see this uh, here. It must be uh, level. It must be horizontal from the shoulder. We don't have it pointing up or pointing down. It doesn't matter where the shoulder is on the person to our left. Our our arm then comes straight out horizontally from the shoulder not angled any any direction and it's straight in line with both of the shoulders as well <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry so now when we and I'll, I'll, I'll do it this way 
if this is the shoulder that I'm dressing to, my hand has to come behind if, if, the, uh, um, if the individual is, is dressing to the front and my arm is really long, let's say, then my, my hand either comes behind or it falls short. You can have a, a, a distance there. It's not a problem. The only ones that really matter for dressing to the right with the arms being up is first squad. That's it. First squad, first element for Air Force and Space Force. Um, everybody else brings their arm up for uniformity's sake. That's it. So uh, for second and third, it doesn't matter that your arm is up. It doesn't matter whether your fingertips are touching the, the shoulder or not. It, what matters is that you align to the front with your eyes. You align to your right with your eyes. The, the spacing ha makes no difference in second and third squad here. All right, I know I've spent a lot of time on that. Uh, 11 minutes. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, let's go. Oh, let me. Uh, oh, oh. All right. So we've got a fourth. So while they're coming in, let me make a. Uh, uh, let me. Let's look at hands here. The thumbs are actually pointed down here on several members. So. <clears throat> Um, let's take a look at right here, this cadet right here. Look at the hand here. This is a neutral wrist. So what we have on the, this is fourth squad leader, but on uh, second and third squad leader, they're both doing this. They're ex ulnar extension. So they're pointing, forcing their, uh, uh, their hand to, to point downward and that's not the army technique it's not anybody's technique except for the Air Force in the 90s chain the 90s were probably the worst for the US Air Force as far as regulations are concerned everything changed and most everything switched back after an awful chief of staff that's beside the point so um, we nobody extends their their arm like this Air Force might but it's really difficult to tell um, and it, it's a it's a hold over from hundreds of years ago when uh, when that was the uh, the style <clears throat> when everybody marched with their arm coming up like that so you had that that level uh, look at least it wasn't completely level but it was a, a, a level look better than having your uh, your hand coming up like that but you want a neutral wrist don't don't point your uh, your index finger down Okay, that's looking better. Oh, now, now see, hands going behind. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. That's great. <coughs> Good job there. And it looks like maybe even a little bit of spacing right here. Fine, not a problem. As long as we have about that 40 inch distance. And I'm doing a study right now on, on uh, distance and interval, which is actually quite revealing. Um, it, it's not a 40 inch distance that we need it's a little bit more so but I'll, I'll come out with that soon all right so when we go to parade rest we have left up against our our body up against our waist and right is on top so right over left um, and then fingers interlocked like that or I'm sorry thumbs thumbs interlocked now the TC doesn't say thumbs interlocked that's actually an Air Force term 
just because it doesn't say it doesn't mean I can I can't use that term so uh, what we don't want is what I see first squad leader doing it looks like and making a little triangle with thumb tips so thumbs need to be interlocked and what's the distance for heels it's actually 10 inches so <clears throat> I know somebody's gonna say oh it's shoulder width no it's not unless your shoulders are 10 inches apart but then where do you measure from are you measure from the outside Do you measure from the inside center so no it's not shoulder width it's 10 inches <clears throat> don't salute commander just because you give them present arms doesn't mean you salute they're not rendering honors to anyone they're not saluting anyone you're taking them through the motion of present arms and then order arms you don't do anything this is for the judges to look to see the technique and I see bad technique in there so most everyone has a, a, a nice flat forearm that's good bringing that hand up but what I see is the elbow is in line with on a couple of people here the elbow is in line with both of the shoulders so you're saluting like this when you should be saluting like this the elbow is supposed to be in front of the torso in front of the shoulders just a bit just a bit so um, and I'll also publish a salute study as well one day which is very interesting as to how the different services salute but your elbow is supposed to be in front of the shoulders <clears throat> the line that uh, the shoulders create <clears throat> so I know that the uh, uh, the mask situation was just awful for many and I know commander you're, tr you're really trying to, to belt out those commands despite that that ridiculousness that's on your face um, so but what we shouldn't see is you doing this when you call commands I get it that you're practically being suffocated all of you are <clears throat> but to properly call commands you're going to want to project from the diaphragm muscle and then get that uh, push that air out um, uh, so doing this means that you're using the wrong muscles to get the uh, to get your voice projected so diaphragm muscle is that u-shaped muscle at the bottom of your rib cage that keeps your torso separated um, and it has uh, <clears throat> that was good Good. <clears throat> so these are adjusted steps. Anytime we close, anytime we open, uh, close interval, oh, uh, uh, normal interval, close and open for the other services. But anytime we do that, they're adjusted steps. You're actually supposed to stop when you get to close interval. So I can see here, uh, just at the back, that uh, second rank uh, if the if the if the rear cadet is any indication hopefully she stayed in line with uh, with the individual in front of her and then stayed in line stayed in line stayed in line so let's say that that second rank is completely in line that's a huge space and then second rank stopped sh short really uh, and left then third rank to really come quite close and it looks like even maybe touching elbows there uh, they're so close uh, uh, the the spacing is entirely off here also I, I should have said that <coughs> boy I apologize so when uh, the the spacing for the squad leaders is off as well so third squad leader is so used to seeing uh, the, the spacing here that she's too, she's too close. Third is too close to second. 
So, <coughs> boy, what you need to do is gauge your uh, your spacing when you first fall in. Now, in training, definitely put that arm up and make sure that you are an arm's length plus six inches away from the individual in front of you. And that's for the squad leaders. When you're in training and you first fall in, go ahead, put that arm up and make sure you have a space between the, the individual's back who's in front of you and your fingertips, that six inch space. Uh, six inches is a good indicator of, of creating that, that 40 inch distance. <clears throat> Even though our arms are, are, are different length, that doesn't really matter. Um, it, it's a, a good indicator for us. Now, when you do that, don't, don't, uh, let me get my microphone out of the way. All right, when you do that, don't push your shoulder forward. You can see how you can, you might be able to do that. Keep your shoulders square and then uh, put that arm up and get the six inch distance. Um, and that's all part of the fall in process that, that should have been uh, accomplished. But uh, now, I, not as not as far as putting the arm up, it's gauging the, the, the distance by your eye. So you should be able to, uh, the squad leader needs to be well rehearsed, well practiced enough because they're a squad leader, they are leading the squad in the army, yet that is a big responsibility. Uh, for Jay Rotsi, it's also a responsibility, maybe not on the same level, but it's still a responsibility. The squad leader needs to know uh, all, almost as much as the uh, uh, as the platoon commander, uh, platoon sergeant. So uh, about uh, drill and ceremonies. So here, that that distance should have been gauged uh, when you first fell in. So uh, there's some some big uh, uh, alignment, or at least distance uh, issues here. Your steps backward, Commander, are are really high, and shouldn't be. So, steps forward, we only lift the foot enough to clear the marching surface. Whether that's half step, whether that's a full step, doesn't matter. Only high enough to clear the marching surface, and we're we're heel striking on both those the 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 full step and the half step. Marching backwards, same thing, only in reverse. It's going to be a toe strike, but you don't lift. The, uh, the knees like you did. Not at all. Why did you have time there, Commander? <clears throat> march two steps forward and you march four steps backward march two steps forward in tempo that was not in tempo it's platoon halt <clears throat> in in regulation drill you need to use proper terms in exhibition drill Fine, whatever you want, not a problem. But also, uh, what's a sidestep? How how big is a sidestep? Fifteen inches. That was not fifteen inches. That was good. Commander, that was really good <clears throat> that you executed a right face in march and stepped off with your four steps. However, your last step wasn't in uh, using the, the proper technique. Let's go back just a bit. I'll show you. Watch the commander's feet here. 
you all of a sudden get really smooth and you slide into that and you face the, the platoon that's great but that last step you slid your your foot into it the, your right foot toe first to to make it as, as smooth as possible you're not supposed to heel strike on on every uh, step forward so also commander you're using your your vocal cords way too much <clears throat> you're trying to project from your 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 throat so you're causing strain a little bit of stomping going on there for the half step however you're also toe striking and also and the, the platoon isn't uh, sized um, well and now <coughs> now that you're marching excuse me again I apologize something this morning in the air um, you can see shoulders moving back and forth uh, the the distance between everybody is uh, as far as uh, as far as squads uh, the distance is quite small and it's inconsistent as well <clears throat> so commander after you turn your head to call the command you need to pop it back and then move into your uh, position there and you're 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 doing a, a fine job that's great but this is a perfect uh, situation here. Look how how large the the step is. Well, how high the step is, I should say. Large would be length. So this is a the high step that is just much too high. And again, like you're going to be toe striking here. See how the toes are coming down first? That's called a toe strike. And still, when you're at half step. You're you're not going to uh, you're you're not going to want to do that because it's not the technique. Yeah, you're very gravelly, and it, it's. I know you're trying to project, but you 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 can't do it from here. You're going to cause damage to your uh, vocal cords, and you're a high school student, so. And this is not just directed to him, but the whole team, whoever takes over after the commander leaves. Um, <clears throat> plus also the, uh, the commands that the, the, ele the element, the squad leaders need to call. Uh, when you're calling strictly from your, your vocal cords here and not trying and not using your, uh, <coughs> not using your, your diaphragm to project, um, that's going to, to damage your vocal cords. And you might not see it, uh, uh, even into your 30s but as soon as you get up towards uh, your your 40s and, and so then your voice is, is uh, if you've caused enough damage and four years of calling commands in this this manner is enough to cause some uh, some damage irreparable damage so then eventually what's going to happen is your voice starts to get gravelly and you can't fix it, it there's no way uh, to do that so um, if you want to keep your voice as, as pristine and wonderful as mine, then, uh, and I'm 57, so I'm, uh, not that I've been uh, talking forever, but I've called my share of commands, so I've always tried to ensure that my, my diaphragm is engaged for calling those commands. So let's uh, make sure that you, you, everybody who's going to call a command, make sure you're going to uh, do that in a, in a proper and productive manner. I shouldn't be marching backwards.
Splatoon home. So you're you're uh, commanding. You're taking your time there with the the facing movement. Um, each time uh, the platoon halts, so it should be in cadence. It should, it, right away, platoon halt, step close. You step close with them, and then in this instance, you're going to execute a right face. So uh, going back to the the platoon is facing this way. You're here, and they're going to make a a, a column left from a halt. <clears throat> I, it, that, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, and then you, all you did is turn and, and step back. That's that's not the technique. Uh, as long as you're centered, <clears throat> and for every drill meet that that uh, I've either judged, uh, attended, or or just watched, really, um, the commander is always three steps away because of space limitations for the. Uh, um, for the drill area. So why you're six, I don't know. Um, unless that was a requirement for this specific uh, meet. And I understand, you know, cadet officer, I get that. Uh, I, I understand the six paces and, and where that comes from. But having, uh, uh, having the uh, cadet six paces away, uh, taking the, the team through the regulation sequence, it's uh, different. Uh, it's not odd necessarily, it's just different. So uh, what you should have done though was uh, if you're six steps away then it, you should have been, well it, it would have, if you're three steps away then you're three steps away here as they turn so it's uh, perfectly fine and that's why you had to back up <clears throat> but that's not the technique uh, that, that you're supposed to use uh, backing up, backing away. Um, anyway so three steps away what you would have done is executed a, a left face in march right into mark time not marching forward but you you kick off and then uh, you know turn on the the platform of the right foot you kick off and then go directly into mark time there and then as soon as the center passes then you execute another left face in march Oh, column of twos. All right. <clears throat> that's that's not your command to give, Commander. <clears throat> It's the squad leader's command to give, and you are so compacted in there. The the there's a lot of spacing uh, issues here. So, what I suggest is you start off um, with proper spacing. Get your arm in six. Get your dress, uh, especially uh, uh, squad leaders. Get that arm in six when you first fall in and use your arm initially then you'll be able to gauge better once you have that visual memory going for you and then uh, every you're you're going to then start off marching and then all the squad leaders are going to squish back together because that's their visual memory that's what they remember they remember being so tight uh, so close into each other so what you do is and the rest of the team then also remembers that as well I call it visual memory. So um, what you need to do then is every time you halt, and you have to do this constantly, every time you halt, just give an informal dress and cover. That's it. Just dress and cover. It's not dress right dress. It's not cover recover. It's dress and cover. So dress and cover. Put your arm up. Get your distance. Everybody look around. Make sure you're good to go. Okay. <clears throat> it's informal. So arms immediately down. Make sure uh, fourth squad you got that arm and six in front of you and then <clears throat> everybody aligns to the person in front of them to the person directly to their right okay forward march we march a little bit I guarantee you it's gonna happen again however the more you stay 
dress and cover, dress and cover, dress and cover. After every time you halt, the easier it is for the team to learn new visual memory, a little bit wider spacing. It might not be perfect, but it's going to get better and it's going to get better and better. And then eventually you'll not have to call it early at all. <clears throat> Everybody will learn their new visual memory. No, my goodness, I don't even know what that was. <clears throat> that I that that wasn't double time. All right. That 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 wasn't double time. Double time, march, another step, the first left, you're going into double time. <clears throat> I want you to look in the training circular, find out the step length for double time, and also find out exactly how to take that step. Remember, it's a step forward for every army step forward, whether it's full, half, or now double, it's a heel strike. It's it's not a it's not a, a a jog. I don't even know what you did. It, it was just toe strikes. Heels never touched, and you you were you're doing high knees. Yeah, that's little tiny arm movements, little tiny foot movements. That that was that's nowhere nowhere close. You have to look at the manual. I'm I'm not going to explain it to you. This is something you really need to to study and to get the team to where they need to be. That wasn't even close. And commander, <clears throat> if it's a requirement to be six step paces away, okay, I, I get it. I haven't seen it before. That doesn't mean it's wrong. But now you can see all throughout here where the, they're at close interval, except for first and second. They're a little wider than close interval. Really high feet. Hold on, Scout. Scout is our puppy. He, he wants to come into my office. So I'm looking at feet now. I'm wondering if you have a marching band member. <clears throat> in fourth squad, third rank. His step is uh, is is the straight, very close to the straight knee cadet uh, technique for uh, for marching bands, uh, marching bands who march core style. His step technique is in, entirely different from everybody else's. He you can he's got a, a good heel plant. But he's not he's not bending. Yeah, he's he's traveling mostly on his heel, not bending the uh, the knees. So for the military, for our application here, oh there he's got a, a knee bend. <clears throat> uh, for the military, marching is walking at attention. Uh, that's e essentially it. Um, 
there's nothing really special to it except the the step length, uh, the step style, and then the arm swing, and then keeping your you know, the rest of your your body at attention, head nice forward, etc. But look at back swing here. Nine to the front, six to the rear. That's like twelve to the rear. We got some sixes in there. When we got some threes and a and a, and a zero. So uniformity of technique is very necessary. <clears throat> All right. So, Commander, good. Uh, Good commands. Um, uh, the the salute drop was good. The salute four eyes right wasn't. We we don't. I mean, it looks kind of cool to do this, and it feels good to bring that hand out and pop it like that. That's not the technique, though. It's straight up and straight down, just like any other time we're going to salute. So I encourage you, Commander, double check on the, the spacing issue. Most likely you should be three steps away. And that's going to then... And you're also walking a tightrope now. I noticed it earlier, but I, I thought it was just an adjustment step. See, really slow, methodical. I, I like methodical. That's great, but don't. Yeah, you're marching tightrope, and you, you've done that more often than not. Uh, marching tightrope is is one foot in front of the other. It doesn't matter about the spacing in between the, the heel and the toe, but you're you're marching like this, and you shouldn't be. You need to have a walking base, and so your walking base is the distance between. You don't walk like that. Uh, well, I don't know. You might. Kind of doubt it. But you, you need to have distance between the inside of your foot and the inside of your foot. That's your walking base. Everybody has a walking base. That's a stomp. That is not. And you stomped even harder coming out of it. That's, that's not half step. Half step is heel straight, roll forward. Heel strike, roll forward, heel strike. And then on forward march, there's no stop, no extra emphasis, no nothing. You just start marching forward. So maintain that walking base, Commander. So did you... Uh I didn't see. It looked like you might have turned your head. Uh, commander, so uh, calling any command when in front of the uh, platoon as you're marching, you're always going to turn your head to the right for every command unless you're going to uh, have the, uh, the platoon move to the left. So, But every other command, halt, uh, and every move to the to the right, double time, all those commands are all called to the right. Um, but if you're moving to the left, then the, the head is turned to the left. Okay, so I'll just leave that there. Uh, interesting, interesting to say the least. I'm I'm always eager to see competitions from around the country. I don't know exactly where Carver City is, but uh, or Carver, Carver High School maybe. 
cover high school citywide drill competition. Maybe that's what that is. Well, anyway, um, I'm always eager to see uh, because even though we think that all drill meets are exactly the same, they're not. They're not at all. It's there's little tiny nuances here and there that are that are strange, <laughs> honestly. All right, so. Um, lots of work to be done. Uh, education on the training circular is going to be paramount for this regulation drill sequence. And then you have to work on individual technique, making sure that the feet are doing what they're supposed to do, making sure that the hands are supposed to do what they're do, what they're uh, they're going to do. Um, and commander, I, the the take charge of your squads for the dismissal, the entrance, is is just painfully slow and I I don't know that I would do that anymore and for the march out I would uh, I, this is just my preference you can keep doing what you do you can completely discount everything on this video it doesn't matter to me um, but I would march the whole team off and then dismiss them from there the the take charge is it's again uh, I'll see we were at 1046 for an eight minute uh, okay so I've been talking for 46 minutes but uh, 1046 almost 11 minutes for an eight minute routine eight minute max and uh, I, I'll, maybe like I was talking about for the entrance maybe you have to do that maybe that's maybe they want to see that <coughs> At this drill meet, they want to see take charge and want to watch each of the uh, the squad leaders take charge and march off and, and all that. So, if that's the case, then that's what you uh, you got to do, and and the, the judges then have a better opportunity to see uh, individually what's going on. So, maybe that's uh, maybe that's the case. Maybe not. So, um, uh, it is unique. I'll, I'll put it that way quite unique um, but I've, I've given you some some things to consider and hopefully this is uh, this is helpful it, it means a lot more study for you uh, for uh, I know commander you contacted me you told me that uh, you'd already graduated and you want to see the team uh, progress so that's why I'm doing the critique so the new commander uh, the new squad leaders uh, the whole team needs to read the training circular, not page to or cover to cover, but uh, everything that is uh, that is going to influence this performance here. Uh, you really all need to read that and then make sure that you are uh, create a drill master position. It it's it's the, going to be a position who uh, the individual knows. Uh, the the training circular inside and out and it walks around with it printed out or at, at, at least on the phone and then uh, knows where everything is in the training circular so you can look it up really quickly yep yep we're doing it right that's the you know the arm swing is supposed to be nine and six and then the arm swing is supposed to be this for uh, for double time um, you know things like that a, a go-to individual that would be great uh, it's helpful this is why lots and lots and lots of units in the military have drill masters it's exactly the reason they're the go-to people for uh, for uh, the knowledge base and to ensure training is progressing in a uh, uh, an appropriate manner uh, to achieve the goal of performing well now um, as far as I'm concerned, whether you ever win a trophy or not is immaterial. I'm looking at you performing the, to the best of your ability with the uh, the knowledge and the time and, and other resources that you have. So uh, we can't. I don't think we can. Uh, I don't think we can concentrate on trophy winning uh, as a goal or. As the only goal, I'll put it that way. Uh, it can be a goal, and that's fine. But as as long as you're training well, then that's good. All right. So I'm finished rambling. Hopefully this was uh, good for you, and I appreciate 
the request. And I will stop now. Thank you.